Okay, so in this, uh, in this problem, we're going to ask a very important question, uh, which is that if I take my motorcycle and get it up to about as fast as I normally like to take it, which is about 80 miles an hour, um, or around 40 meters per second, how big of a cliff can I jump across, or basically how big of a chasm can I jump across and still be safe. And by still be safe, I'm going to tell you how I define that, which is that I really don't want my motorcycle falling much more than one meter. All right. Um, anything more than a three foot fall on a motorcycle would be terrifying. To be honest, a three foot one would be pretty terrifying as well. But um, but let's let's just keep that as as what it is. And the question that we're asking is how far apart. Um, I'm going to just call this Big D. How far apart can these guys be to, so that I can basically um, make this jump? Okay, and there's no ramp or anything. We're just going straight off. Okay. This looks like a pretty complicated problem. Uh, as you know, we're now, as, as if, if you've noticed, um, something that important is going to start happening here, which is that we're going to start moving in two dimensions. If you think about what's going to happen whenever my motorcycle comes off... Um, you know, comes off the, uh, the, the, this ledge, um, sorry about that, uh, when it comes off the ledge, come on, as you notice, when it comes off the ledge, as you notice, when it comes off the ledge, it's going to, and, and you've, you've, I'm sure you've seen this before, when things fall, they kind of fall, uh, uh, they shouldn't go up, but they, um, they kind of follow a, a parabolic uh, trajectory down, you know, until they hit their next thing. All right, and so this movement that you see, this parabolic trajectory, it seems like it's going to be pretty hard to actually uh, to, to, to figure out, to calculate, because we haven't done anything about two-dimensional motion, we haven't done anything like that's a complicated equation that actually describes that movement. Um, it kind of looks like a circle, but not quite. Uh, the great news is this: we don't actually have to ever deal with this with this shape. Um, it turns out that when we're moving in two dimensions, uh, our movement in x, for instance, is completely separate from our movement in y. So the reason that it has this shape is because x, it turns out. Um, doesn't affect y at all. Y, we basically fall with gravity. Um, X, it turns out, we're just going to keep moving at the same speed the whole time. Um, and so we, we can basically do a lot of the problems that we've done previously, um, and we're just combining the two together. But there's no new, no really new physics that we're doing. Um, all the physics is just basically uh, based on these, the one-dimensional uh, acceleration movement uh, equations that we've been dealing with for, in, in our past class. So these, the, you know, these equations over on, on the right, uh, labeled one through um, labeled one through five. So we're just doing, we're basically just doing this. We're just going to deal with each uh, dimension separately. Let me show you what uh, what I'm talking about and make it maybe it'll become a little bit clearer. First thing, as usual, I'm just going to um, just going to, to um, uh, pound this into your heads as much as I can. We have to set up our coordinate system. Uh, our coordinate system is going to be exactly what I'm showing uh, down here in this this bottom one, which is that. Uh, we're going to be using um, x positive to the right, y positive up, as I normally do. Uh, the only difference is, is now we um, have to set. Excuse my clock. Um, we now have to set where the uh, the origin is uh, in both x and y, um, and I'm going to set that right up here, basically right where I'm launching off of the uh, off of the cliff. Uh, so that's going to be where x equals zero and y equals zero. Okay, so that that point is kind of going to be where we measure everything from, um, and so that's going to help us as we go through the the problem and try to figure it out. So again, as, as I said before, we have to deal with the x and y dimensions separately. Let's go ahead and start with the x dimension. All right. Um, as it turns out, that's that's of course the the one we're trying to find because um, we're trying to find d. So d, as you can tell, is just basically if you think about um, uh, if you think about this point as being some later point x, all right, um, and this 
point as being the x initial and this point as being y initial, all right, then we realize that um, we can use this equation, which is x is equal to x0 plus vt. And the great thing is, you notice I didn't use v average. This is equation one. Normally this says v average, but um, it turns out that there's no actual acceleration in the x direction. Uh, because um, the, you know, gravity doesn't act in the x direction, there's nothing else. We're not going to worry about wind or anything like this. In the x direction, we just come flying off the cliff, okay? And then nothing affects us until, uh, until we land back on the other, the other side. And so there's nothing to actually change our velocity from the one we had initially, at least in the x direction. Um, so so our, our, our velocity at the top um, is, is 40 meters per second. And the velocity in the x direction at the bottom is 40 meters per second. So the velocity, the, the velocity in the x direction is the same for all, for all points. So again, if we think about kind of underlining our knowns, we know our vx, we know our x0, all right? Uh, because we set x equal equal to zero. What we don't know, however, is x. x is what we're trying to find. x is basically that distance, that big capital D, that distance that we're trying to find. We don't know that, okay? We also don't know the time. This is the problem, because you remember in the past that when we don't know two variables, it's very hard to actually solve the problem. Uh, Normally, we would say, well, let's go through the rest of the equations, uh, equation 2, 3, 4, 5, see if any of those work. I'll tell you ahead of time, you can go ahead and do that on your own, but we never have enough information to solve this just with, this, uh, just with one equation. In the x direction, we don't have enough information to actually solve the problem. And so this is going to create a problem. Uh, so I'm actually going to leave the x direction for a while. Let's come down here and do the y direction. Because it turns out that in these problems, often we have to do things in the y to, in the in y to find out information to plug into the x. So let's look at what the what we know in the y direction. Well, in the y direction, we know a, a lot more. Um, we know y is zero. We know the initial position. That we also actually know the y position at this second point up here which is that we know that that's equal to minus one meter. If we look at this, I said that I, won't, I don't want to fall more than one meter. We have y zero equal to zero up here. So this point right here um, is a meter below our zero. So that's why we get a negative one meter. So we know the y for that point. We also know that we don't actually have any initial velocity in the y direction. Um, again, all of our velocity at the beginning is in the x direction, so we know uh, our v0 as well. It turns out because we know those two things, this is very similar to our, pro our dropping the ball problem and that we can use this equation which is y is equal to y0 plus v0 this is y in the y direction t plus one half the acceleration in the y direction t squared. Okay? Um, so again, let's go ahead and, and, and simplify this a little bit. We know that our initial velocity in the y direction is actually zero. So we can get rid of that part of it. Um, and again, what we're trying to find, why we're even using this equation at all, is we're trying to find time. Time is the only unknown. The reason we're trying to find time is if we can find time over here, we can place that back into the x-dimensional equation because the time it takes to fall from, from this, this top point up at the top down to the bottom point is the same amount of time that it takes us to go that same distance in x. In other words, we're falling and, and, and moving in the x direction. We're moving the y direction and the x direction at the same time. And both of them basically end when we land here at that second point. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to find time here. Again, um, if you go back and look at the other uh, video that we did, uh, this I went through the algebra, but basically you get this equation in the end when you do all that algebra. And so we can actually find the time it takes to fall. Um, so uh, let's see, our y, uh, our y is minus one, uh, so we get two times minus one meter, minus our initial position is just zero. 
And our acceleration as before is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. That's equal to the time. Let's go ahead and get out our calculators and do that uh, and do that calculation. And when we take when we do out that calculation, we get that the amount of time it takes to fall is zero point four five seconds. Alright, so that's about the amount of time it takes to fall a meter. So this is the amount of time it took basically to fall from one from that one the, the this top point up in the upper left down to the bottom point in the bottom right. Well the great thing is again we can now plug that time back into our x equation and we can say that x is equal to x zero. Again, x zero was just zero, remember. Our velocity in the x direction is just forty meters per second. And the time it takes for us to 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 do this to travel that distance is just 0.45 seconds. Again, if we get our calculators out and figure out how big of a jump I can make, that's equal to 18 meters. Or about 20 yards or so. So I can make about a 20 yard jump uh, pretty easily uh, going 80 miles an hour. It'd still be pretty terrifying, but um, but that's what I could do. So again, the important things to remember are two things. One is that when we're doing two-dimensional motion, the two dimensions are separated out from one another. We have to solve them separately. We do the x dimension separate from our y dimension. So that's the first thing that you want to remember. Uh, the second thing you want to remember is, is you want to do the, when you're doing those two separately, you often will have to use the y dimension to figure out how long it takes to, for instance, fall, or for instance, when you're doing a ball, how long it takes for the ball to hit the ground. Um, and then you're going to use the x dimension uh, with that new time that you have to basically figure out uh, what the um, what the total distance is that you've traveled. I hope that it was clear. Uh, if not, please come into the class, ask some questions, ask them online, do whatever you can, and uh, I will see you in class. Uh, thank you.